Well, good morning. I'm speaking today on behalf of my colleague, Dr. Barbara Marlenga, back at the National Children's Center. And um, following up with uh, David, we've worked a long time with David and before that with Richard Clark, uh, child development specialist, to take a look at how do we help parents or adults responsible for children on the farm, how do we help them understand some of these principles here and then actually give them some of the resources and the guidance that uh, they can apply then to their daily setting. And uh, you're right, I'm going to ask the Dewey clicker to go back on duty. Uh, so with the next slide, I'm going to share with you uh, uh, over 20 years ago, the question came to the Children's Center and people like Marilyn Adams, Mary Fleming in Ohio. Uh, we were talking that parents were asking us for basic guidelines on when can my child do whatever that is. And uh, there were discussions about can we even put this information together to give that kind of guidance. So a team got together and over the course of uh, three to four years, uh, many of the people right here in the room were part of the original group that developed the North American Guidelines for Children's Agricultural Tasks uh, the, and have since then been known as NACAT. These guidelines have 62 different tasks that children are doing, including there's four guidelines on uh, harvesting tobacco and planting tobacco. So uh, we were at that time looking at what are the jobs that kids are uh, doing, mostly on family farms. So these guidelines have become the standard. They've been posted on the uh, internet. There's uh, visual posters. There's background resource manuals that goes through the job hazard analysis framework, uh, that type of information. And for a long time, they were really the only thing that was out there. Uh, with the guidelines being established through a consensus process, because there wasn't any good research to validate this, NIOSH then put uh, funds out to do the research to verify are these guidelines correct? Do they really address the child development issues that are out there? And what uh, research had shown uh, for the team of people that did a number of studies on NACAT was that the tractor guidelines in particular were not consistent with child development. So with David Hard's leadership uh, back from 2012 to 2013, a team revised the tractor-related guidelines, and those updated resources are now available online and can be downloaded. The net effect of that project that took what is the research, compared it with the existing guidelines that were developed in 1999, the net effect was to raise the lower age level of acceptable uh, assignment of tractor operation to kids from 12 up to 14 years of age. And I understand there was still some debate as to whether that was um, uh, the right age. So those guidelines have been there. They've been the, the standard. They're always there for people to use to adapt. Uh, uh, they have been adopted in a number of other countries. And additional guidelines for different types of activities that were not part of the original set have been developed by other people as well. Uh, from that, what we did then, we, requests came from employers who were hiring youth to, in legally uh, acceptable projects and activities like hand harvesting vegetables, uh, certain orchard operations. The employers asked to have guidelines that would add into that the uh, federal regulations so that it made it easier for them in posters that they could just post in the work setting. So the uh, now referred to as SAGHAF, their safety guidelines for hired adolescent farm workers, and Mary Miller was one of the key leaders of that project. These have now been out since the year 2007 and have probably been distributed more than the original uh, NACAT. So these have been also uh, uh, easy to use, easy to understand, easy to follow resource that says it's not just about age, but it's really about the ability of the child. It's about the uh, opportunity to supervise and train this person and make sure that they have the correct uh, personal protective uh, equipment when they're doing the work so that we want kids to work, we want kids to work safely, and to do that it has to be uh, appropriate. So we now have uh, these resources and the question came back to us was, well, why are not more people using them? So. Uh, the next step was to find out why aren't people actually using them? Do people know that they're out there? And how do we let people know about that? So we contacted an agricultural marketing firm to ask their advice because we thought it was just the way they looked and people didn't like the way they looked or something like that. And 
uh, their comment was really, you know, we need to speak to the farming community, the farm parents, so that they so that they want to look for resources, so they want to find out what could uh, I be doing to make my child uh, work safely in agriculture. So working with the firm, we developed a series of ad advertisements, and that's what you'll see a lot of us on the uh, back shelf back there, and really talk to the culture of farming, the culture of being a farm parent. And so these were developed with the idea that we would pilot test them and then launch a national campaign. And this is one of those areas where uh, you wish you had a million dollars so you could take it to that next level of having a national campaign and, and we're not there yet. So what I want to share with you is what are some of these resources, How do what's out there that any of you could actually take and use and help uh, uh, really spread that message of adding the parent or the employer with the developmental phase of that child and then finding that right match of the right work for them to do. So some of the campaign ads really uh, focus to the, the parent as being, my first job is being a parent, my second job is being a farmer, and thinking of the responsibilities that way. Um, the, uh, another one was talking about we as parents together, we are very responsible and we uh, take our responsibility wholeheartedly. Uh, we also developed through some, for putting in the newspaper, a whole series of uh, things like, uh, can my child do this? Uh, how do I know if they're strong enough? How can I help the child understand and predict animal behavior? And then from there, what was what is now available, and it's relatively new, is a, it's called a Cultivate Safety website, which takes that notion of I'm a parent first, I'm a farmer second. And this is what we call now our public face to the resources and the information and the motivation uh, to want to match my child with the work that's appropriate. And this, uh, I'm just going to walk you through a few pages of this uh, website. So you can see you can go through by age because it's still, many parents just want to know when my child is 12 years old, so help me figure out what is appropriate. So you can easily go through this in uh, decipher by age. You can break it up by family farms or hired youth. And then based on this is just clicking on the green family farms, and then it takes you down to what are the key things that are, um, are there. And then if you actually drill down, for example, to the tractor, you can get into the exact, the specific uh, NACAT tractor guidelines. So, and that from there, you can just download the, uh, any one particular, if it's pulling a trailed implement or hitching or whatever that is. Um, the other piece that's new that, I think some of you might find interesting, and we know that agricultural media is interested in this. As uh, we have the Google alerts in the uh, different ways of the meltwater uh, reports that come across in terms of news clippings of children who are injured or killed in agriculture, uh, we de-identify those and we put them up and they're actually categorized now so that if you're looking for has there been a tractor related uh, crash of a child in New Hampshire, you, you'll actually be able to pull through there and find that. And it's not an all-inclusive uh, listing of news clippings, but it at least helps people understand that it's not a freak accident, that these things have happened, and that uh, we have ways that we can actually prevent some of these. So I would just uh, welcome you to go to this site to take whatever is helpful for you in terms of messages that you want to give. We really encourage pe people to use the teachable moment. If there's a certain type of an event that happened in your region, find out how often has that happened before, or is there a really simple, ready-made safety message that we can take and just put that into our newsletter. Uh, so other things that we have in there, and many of these things, uh, I point to David because his uh, face and his messages are uh, embedded throughout this whole website with different videotapes and different messages in terms of child development. So you can go right through and it says, assess your child's ability to do the job safely, and it'll show you the resources or click onto some videos. All of the videos are about two minutes long, so easy for parents to look at. And we really encourage this site to be for where you send the parents when they're trying to make those decisions. So those are some of the highlights of the website. We encourage you to um, promote it. If you want to make a link to your website from this, uh, you're certainly welcome to do that. We have staff that are always happy to help facilitate getting this message out. NIOSH has been the primary funder of all of this. 
So it's really in the public domain. And then I would just say in closing, these have primarily to do with children who are working, either hired to work or working on family farms. We have some pieces of that that are for play, and we will be adding information about working in community gardens, about agritourism operations, so it's sort of getting ready to work uh, sometimes. Uh, and then we also have uh, Mary Miller pointed out yesterday the model policy if you're hiring young people. Uh, that is posted on the, on the site as well. So we have those resources and others, and then we still go back to the campaign that was put together about eight years ago by the Childhood Egg Safety Network that tried to get that message out that children 12 years, under 12 years, should never be on or near tractors because that is the source of the most common uh, fatality or uh, traumatic injury for children. And all of those resources are available uh, free for the downloading and uh, oftentimes available in large quantity from our site. So that's what we have that really builds off of the great research that's been done by David and others and the great research and the consensus development of the people that have put together uh, many of these guidelines. So thank you.